Day after day, we are surrounded by the presence of criminals. We are spectators to the deepest darkness in human actions and the bizarre reality that someone's suffering can be a form of pleasure. As dedicated investigators of the criminal world, we're on a mission to uncover the most shocking crimes and get inside the minds of those who commit them. I am Luke, and today I bring you another unreal true crime. The Case of Maria Bellin Bernal Maria Bellin Bernal was born on March 14, 1988, in Quito, Ecuador. Maria studied law at the Central University, where she graduated as a lawyer. She later obtained a specialization and a master's in criminal law from the Andean University Simon Bolivar and also held a master's in oral litigation from the California Western School of Law. She was pursuing another master's degree in criminal procedural law at an Ecuadorian university. Additionally, she worked for Defensa Penal Group, part of a team of six women primarily handling criminal cases. In 2017, Maria married Lieutenant Herman Cáceres, a police officer. They met after he helped rescue her and her family during a robbery. Following this traumatic event, they continued to communicate and eventually fell in love, moving together to southern Quito. Despite having a child from a previous relationship and being a dedicated mother, Maria successfully balanced her time between her family and career. She became a respected litigator, especially known for her extensive knowledge of criminal procedures. One of her most prominent cases was representing the family of Alejandro Palace, who died in March 2021 after being hit by a patrol car from the Metropolitan Transit Agency of Quito. Maria demonstrated the agent's responsibility in the incident, attributing it to an intensive maneuver that prevented Palace from avoiding the accident. She also handled cases of sexual assault, gender violence, police defense and alimony, aware that her role as a criminal lawyer had earned her enemies. In mid-2022, she named two individuals on TikTok, holding them responsible if anything were to happen to her. On the morning of Sunday, September 11, Maria entered the General Alberto Enriquez Gallo Police School in north of Quito to bring a hamburger to her husband, Lieutenant Cáceres, who was on duty inside the school. That night, there was a party at the police facility attended by officers and cadets, unknown to Maria. Upon entering the police school to find her husband, she was surprised to discover him in his room with cadet Jocelyn Sanchez, who immediately left the scene. The timeline of the events of September 11 is still unclear, with many details omitted by the police. However, according to some witnesses, Maria and Casares had a violent argument in his dormitory that night. Subsequent to Maria Bellin's disappearance, Cadet Sanchez, who was involved in the incident, later recounted disturbing details. According to Sanchez, Lieutenant Cáceres assaulted Maria Bellin for at least 20 minutes, during which Maria Bellin screamed in pain and pleaded for help. It was also revealed that a cadet, alarmed by Maria Bellin's cries and requests for assistance, alerted a superior officer about the fight. However, the superior ordered the cadet not to intervene, insisting that no one should get involved in a husband and wife's problems. Despite at least 20 police members hearing the commotion, no one intervened to help the defenseless woman, and nothing was known of her whereabouts after that night. Cadet Sanchez recalled that Maria Bellin's screams suddenly stopped, followed by a profound silence. Shortly thereafter, she heard Cáceres leaving the bedroom. Sanchez reported hearing Cáceres dragging something heavy, bumping against the stairs of the police residence. Although the police school's sentry logged Maria Bellin's entry, her exit was never recorded. On September 12, Maria Bellin's mother, Elizabeth, received a life-altering call. Around 2 p.m., Cáceres contacted her to inquire if Maria Bellin was with her. According to Cáceres, his wife hadn't returned home following an argument while heading to their residence. 
He claimed that Maria Bellin exited their car and took a taxi. Elizabeth pressured Cosres to report Maria Bellin's disappearance to the authorities, but he excused himself, saying his superiors wouldn't allow him to leave work for this task. Elizabeth, undeterred, requested one of Cosres' superiors to permit him to file the report. That evening around 5.30, Maria Bellin's disappearance was officially reported. The next morning, Cosres provided a version of events to the police and was even taken to the avenue where he claimed his wife got into a taxi. However, he couldn't pinpoint the exact location where she supposedly crossed the busy avenue, an unlikely place for a taxi to stop in the middle of the night. In an interview with an Ecuadorian digital media outlet, Elizabeth recounted that when Maria Billen's disappearance was reported, police officers found small blood spots on Casares' mattress in his dormitory. When officers prepared to collect a sample, Casares objected, stating a judicial order was needed for such a procedure and insisting on the presence of his lawyer during any examinations. These events unfolded in front of Elizabeth, who actively followed the official search for her missing daughter from the beginning. Doubts about Casares' involvement grew. He was detained for eight hours for investigative purposes, as the law allows, but was released after his statement because the prosecutor found insufficient grounds for pretrial detention. The following morning, Casares did not report to work at the police station. Neighbors reported that between 10.40 p.m. on September 13 and 4 a.m. on September 14, Casares fled. Elizabeth recounted these events during her appearance before the National Assembly of Ecuador on September 27, highlighting the irregularities in the case. Following the main suspect's escape, the prosecutor's office criticized the police for not surveilling Casares adequately. Following the disappearance of Maria Bellin, the police institution reported that the order for surveillance of Lieutenant Casares, the main suspect, was issued after he had already fled. Maria's mother, Elizabeth, believed that the security forces and judicial system failed to ensure safety and due process, allowing the suspect to escape. Of the 20 police officials present at the party on the night of Maria's disappearance, including high-ranking ones who ordered others to remain silent, only Cadet Sanchez was arrested. She was accused of having heard the entire incident and not acting. Sanchez's lawyer told the media that she and Lieutenant Casares had a special friendship and denied any romantic relationship. Security cameras at the police school showed that Casares left the premises twice on the night of September 11. The first time he was gone for 15 minutes, but the second time he was away for at least four hours. During this interval, Casares contacted a cadet identified as Ned H&M, a friend of Sanchez, whose house was searched by authorities on September 22. After Maria's disappearance, the Ecuadorian government offered a $20,000 reward for Casares' capture. Public scrutiny fell on Diego Ordonez, the security secretary, and Patricio Carrillo, the interior minister, for their handling of the case. Ordonez emphasized the importance of safeguarding the police's institutional reputation, while Carrillo had left the country amidst the case's uproar. In response to public pressure and protests demanding the truth about Maria's disappearance, Carrillo announced that the police school would be led by women. The police also started administrative processes against 12 members, ranging from colonel to sergeant, but no further arrests were made, leaving only Sanchez in custody. Elizabeth consistently demanded the truth about her daughter's fate, expressing frustration over the lack of case resolution on social media. Carrillo, then the interior minister, promised to resign if Maria was not found within 30 days. Subsequently, a large police contingent was deployed to search for Maria. Elizabeth criticized the police for not effectively searching for her daughter and recounted searching through garbage dumps and ravines herself. On September 21, human remains were found near the police school. Later that day, President Guillermo Lazo and Minister Carrillo confirmed Maria's femicide via Twitter, vowing to bring the perpetrators to justice and offering condolences to her family. Carrillo apologized to Maria's family at a press conference, 
covered by major media outlets, the case continued to draw significant public attention and scrutiny over the handling of the investigation and the search for the responsible parties. While Minister Cario was addressing the media, hundreds of citizens gathered in Quito to demand that the state not let the femicide of Maria Bellin go unpunished and to show her mother that she was not alone. The march, which traveled one of the city's main avenues and reached the police headquarters, was led by feminist organizations and accompanied by relatives of thousands of disappeared people in Ecuador. Amidst posters and photographs of Maria Bellin, the demonstrators sang Cancion Sin Nido, which has become an anthem of the feminist movement in the region, with adaptations for the Ecuadorian case. A feminist activist, who followed Maria Bellin's case and publicly spoke about the police's actions and government blunders, told the international news agency Infobay that the presence of hundreds of women on the streets was due to feeling mocked, vulnerable, and, above all, fed up. In a statement, 29 feminist organizations declared themselves in permanent mobilization until the full truth about the disappearance and femicide of Maria Bellin was known. They rejected Minister Carrillo's version, which labeled the case as a crime of passion, minimizing the institutional complicities within the police that concealed the aggression, failed to intervene, and allowed the main suspects escape. On September 22, the Central University of Ecuador's theater, where Maria Bellin earned her law degree, was filled with family, friends, activists, journalists, and citizens attending the wake in her honor. Elizabeth arrived at noon, accompanied by the funeral procession carrying her daughter's coffin. Morning amidst media flashes and microphones, Elizabeth called for independent experts to investigate her daughter's case and demanded to know the truth. Maria Bellin's son also attended the wake, and on September 23, Maria Bellin was buried. Maria Bellin Bernal's disappearance and murder have raised questions about police training and suspicions of a possible cover-up by Casares officers and subordinates. The case has sparked a debate on whether Maria Bellin's femicide should be considered a state crime. The incident shook Ecuador to the extent that, on September 23, President Lazo, who described the lawyer's murder as femicide, asked for Minister Carrillo's resignation as interior minister, effective immediately. He also ordered the dismissal of two police generals, the National Director of Police Judicial Investigation and the Head of Citizen Security and Public Order. Additionally, President Lazo requested the resignation of the entire police high command and gave the police commander, Fausto Salinas, a week to deliver definitive results leading to Casares capture. Since Maria Bellin's body was found, suspicions about the investigator's inefficiency have increased. The police stated that the remains were wrapped in a blanket and buried in a steep hill. However, photographs of the site show a blanket in perfect condition, which, according to the official version, should have been buried for at least 10 days with a decomposing body. Salinas, the police commander, provided details of the autopsy and part of the investigations to an Ecuadorian radio station. However, Police Commander Salinas' statement that Maria died by strangulation has raised suspicions, especially since bloodstains were found in Casares' room and car when luminal was applied. This has led feminist organizations and several lawyers to argue that the police are both judge and party in this case, leading to calls for an impartial entity to ensure the investigation is conducted with the utmost transparency. While the police prioritize finding Casares and debates continue over state responsibility, the international community awaits the involvement of international experts and oversight by the Inter-American Commission on Human Rights in the investigation. Maria Bellin's family is shattered. Her mother insists that Maria Bellin should not become just another statistic among the 206 femicides recorded in Ecuador until September 3, 2022. Before the National Assembly, she demanded speed and transparency in the investigation. Protection was also requested for Maria Bellin's best friend, who, since September 15, had heard strong rumors about the location of the body, found only days later on September 21. This suggests that authorities did not give due attention to this crucial information. Furthermore, this friend, 
whose identity is being protected, has received threatening calls from the police. Recent information indicates that Lieutenant Caceres left Ecuador on the same day the police and prosecutor's office refused to detain him. Surveillance cameras captured him riding his motorcycle across Ecuador to the Colombian border. In Colombia, he traveled to Medellin, where he was last seen in his motorcycle, as reported by Colombian and Ecuadorian media on October 5, 2022. On December 30, 2022, he was arrested in Palomino, La Guajira, Colombia, while working as a bartender. Caceres, the main suspect in Maria Bellin's femicide, was identified through his use of Ecuadorian slang, leading to his capture. He now faces 34 years and eight months in prison, the maximum penalty in Ecuador for femicide, as reported by local media. This concludes today's case update. As always, I appreciate your support for my work. If you subscribe, like, and share this video, it helps me continue creating content. This was another episode of Unreal True Crime. See you soon.